All right. Um, welcome to day two of the straining of this build. Working on this uh, Tamiya Zero still. Hopefully today's uh, camera angles are a little better than yesterday. I, I, little, I think maybe this is better because now I can be closer here and then you guys can still see you know, as long as the angle's okay. So, um, I did a little work after the stream ended yesterday, um, just kind of finishing off a couple of the things that we started on the stream yesterday. Um, so I, I finished the uh, interior um, control surfaces, um, adding the various throttle levers and whatnot there on the sidewall. Um, also adding the same kind of thing on the other side. And then I managed to get that uh, lever arm in there. You can probably see the little red dot, but that's about it uh, in there. Focus. Uh, that lever that is actually there. I should have put that in to begin with, but uh, missed it in, in, the, uh, in the instructions. And added these, um, I believe these are oxygen canisters and the like, uh, behind the pilot seat. So the cockpit itself is uh, mostly complete. There are a couple of things that I want to do within it today. So we've got these um, banks of, of knobs and switches, especially here on the uh, side of the wall. Uh, and frankly, you can't really see them <laughs> because it's all black. So I will come back and do a dry brush uh, with some very dark gray kind of highlight uh, those buttons a little bit better, buttons and switches. Uh, so I'll do that uh, wherever we've got some switching in the various locations that don't already have some color like the red on these small dots here that you probably can't see, but they're there. Um, but the first thing I want to do is actually come back to the instrument panel and get these uh, decals on for the dials, uh, because then I can, once I do that, then I can attach the uh, receivers on the back end of the, of the nose armament, and basically be done with the, uh, with the interior. Uh, I'm not sure how, how long we'll go today, how much I'll do on stream, um, because a lot of this is going to require some trips outside to use rattle cans or a lot of different uh, paint mixings for the airbrush. So, for instance, the spinner on the, um, or not actually not the spinner, but but uh, where the prop resides at the, end, at the front of the engine, is uh, a mixture of colors that uh, I'll need to mix and spray. Same thing for the exhaust manifolds. Um, we've got several places where that's the case. Um, the interior color for the, the wheel wells are, the, are, the, are a mixture, as well as the, um, the insides of the um, landing gear covers. Um, so it's likely that I will do uh, some of that off stream because it will require a lot of Maneuvering the airbrush and cleaning up the the, air, the air, airbrush between different uh, colors. Um, so my guess is that I'll probably do a lot of that off stream uh, rather than on. Uh, if, you, if you've seen one airbrushing, you've seen them all. Uh, nothing particularly fancy about what I'm doing with it. Um, I just need to be quick about it. Uh, with the paint mixing and, and, and whatnot, so that I don't uh, have paint start drying in the airbrush. Uh, we started to see a little bit of that yesterday because I was a little slow. But we will do the decaling 
and I may do some things like uh, step outside for a moment to spray the engine cowling so you just so you can see what that looks like sprayed and clean um, and the various components like it. Um, But again, I probably won't do a lot of airbrushing on the stream today, just to avoid camera movement and you know, things like that. So, um, so like I said, we'll start with uh, with the decals. Um, so we've got uh, three different sets that need to go into the um, instrument panel. So I'll do some of that today. They're all about today. Um, so they come on their own, their own little sheet, separate from all of the meatballs and all the outside colors. Um, the mask for the, the canopy. I'll probably mask it on, on stream at some point, though, again, and I'll spray it on stream. Uh, uh, and the way I do this is I have a bowl of water on a little coffee hot plate to warm it up, because I find it works better with warm water. Um, that I drop a decal in, it softens the the backing, uh, that the, this paper backing that the decals are sitting on, and then you can remove you can remove the decal and put it into place. But in order to get this decal uh, to sit fleshly on the uh, surface there of, of the uh, instrument panel, those raised dial roundels, um, I need to um, I use something that actually softens the decals even further. So I have these um, decal setting solutions that uh, soften the, um, the decal even further and actually kind of makes it suck down onto whatever detail is under it. It also makes them very fragile, so it makes it an interesting thing to, to handle. But um, the results are uh, often fantastic, so um, it's worth worth the risk. Uh, so I just cut mine out one at a time, uh, being very careful not to impact any of the other um, other decals. Again, since this, this is a very sharp blade, still uh, it cuts very nicely through that, uh, and I can separate the one decal. It's not, it's not going to be visible. On the camera, there's a very uh, there's a clear film that connects the five dials of this particular decal, and in, in older kits that might have been like a rectangle and a, a bunch of empty space in between. But this particular one actually follows the um, shape of those decals, which is great because it will make it fit better um, on the surface of the instrument panel. So that is now in the water. Um, I use uh, this brush only for this purpose. I only use it um, for handling decals. It's never, it used to be uh, something I used for paint, um, but now it's only used for decals and for this for this setting uh, setting solution. So I like to um, get the surface that I'm going to work on. Damp with it. So that the back side of the decal is nice and soaked with the, the solution as well as the front. And I actually have these old handkerchiefs that I use because they're very low uh, likelihood of transferring fibers and the like. So it doesn't take long, especially when the water is warm. Uh, pull the decal out. Sorry, that's my, my package being delivered, I think. Uh, 
Um, I'll that one up. We don't have a detail map. And then we just uh, slide a decal off the paper. Sometimes it's easier to get it to hang off the edge a little bit uh, before trying to slide it off, especially if this thing doesn't want to stay still. But we'll see if we can hold it in place with something behind it and get that decal off the paper. So the decal is off the paper, paper is no longer needed. Sometimes it's nice to hang on to them in case, in case for some reason you need to, to put the decal back on it for a second. Um, if you do, you're oftentimes in trouble because of that. Um, but uh, hopefully not necessary. So and you can use either the brush or the smooth surface or, or a pair of, of tweezers like I am here uh, to position the decal where you want it. And so I'm trying to get it seated where those dials are right in the locations that they're uh, surrounding ring are. Uh, and then I come back with some additional setting solution and trying not to move the decal. Just really kind of soak it in that solution. And we let it sit for a while. Um, the, um, the uh, temptation is to come back and keep touching it and moving it and filling with it because it won't look right for a while. Um, but that I found in in the history in my history of building is often a bad idea. So right now, so we'll focus. Please focus here. So you can kind of see the decal here next to my, my finger over here. Um, where it's just kind of sitting on that surface right now. I'm having trouble focusing on the front. I just keep wanting to focus on the back. There we go, maybe. You can see that those five uh, dials there that we've added. Um, so that's, that's number one. Uh, I'm going to go grab that package that just dropped off of the door. I'll be right back in, in two seconds. So uh, we just continue that process. So we've got the one on the left. Uh, now we'll do the one on the right. So we again remove it from the rest of them. Put the full sheet aside so I don't actually drop some water on it or something. Drop that in the bowl of warm water. Get some more solution on the brush. Get the um, surface ready by adding the solution in there, especially especially with things like this that you need them to recess down into a, a surface. It's really good to have some of the setting solution down inside the uh, place that we will eventually call home. So again, it doesn't take very long with the warm water. You can do this without warm water, um, but I find that the warm water helps Soften the decal a little bit more. 
which makes it easier to position, easier to uh, get it to fit to the shape that you want. Um, and it just doesn't take as long to lose its adhesion to the paper backing. So it becomes less likely to be torn during the process of getting it off that backing. Now some, some people will actually cut out the individual dials. They don't they'll have like a punch set that has a bunch of circular uh, punches that they'll use to literally separate each of these, so say on this particular decal six dials out so that um, they can place each one of them because it makes it a little easier to make sure that the, the dial you're interested in is actually where you want it if you only are dealing with one at a time. So when you're trying to get five or six of these dials, or in some cockpits, tastes like an entire dial, especially with a modern aircraft, or an entire uh, instrument panel with screens and all kinds of things, um, it's easier to deal with a single dial or screen at a time. Um, I haven't gotten to that point in my career call it that, I guess. Um, I, haven't, I haven't found it particularly necessary yet. What it usually means is that one of my dials may be slightly off. Um, or one of its edges is not lying nicely within its, its, um, its ring. Um, and you can tell that when you're looking at it under a magnifying glass, but um, otherwise you can't really. Um, so I think it's better, or it's more, it's more um, important to do that with individual dials in larger scales. So if you were building a, a 132nd scale uh, rather than 148th like this, or, or even larger than that, then I would think that um, doing the individual dials might be uh, beneficial because then then you have absolute control over something that's much larger and more visible. More visible both on, on, the, uh, on the surface and just because of its sheer size. The cockpit opening will be larger, um, so a lot easier for the unaided eye to, uh, to see in a larger scale. I'm just kind of going back and adding a little bit more uh, solution to the decals that I first put on on the left as well as on top of the right. They're already starting to set down nicely. Uh, it looks like I might have slightly missed a little bit on those decals on the left, but again, once everything is in, in the cockpit space, um, you, you won't really be able to see it, so it won't matter to me. Um, so we have one more pair of dials for the instrument panel. There's also a pair of dials that are on that um, left side panel of, of, of dials and switches. Um, but we're just about done with the amount of decaling that we're going to do today. Uh, most of the decaling for, for aircraft like this are done on the exterior. It's not a whole lot to be done inside, but there are a few things. Um, primarily the instrument panel. More modern aircraft have a whole lot more going on inside, so there may be a whole lot more decals. Um, indeed, some even some World War II aircraft have a much more complicated instrument panel, but, but this one is, is, is quite simple. So not a lot to be done on this particular one decal-wise. So we'll finish this up, um, let them sit for a while, come back and uh, Press on them with this this, uh, this handkerchief that I've got here um, to really try to make sure that when they're seated, that there are no uh, water or air bubbles trapped under them, particularly air bubbles. 
that you want to avoid is the air bubbles because if not, that nice clean, clear film um, will actually start yellowing over time. And uh, you don't want that. Not yellowing, um, silvering, sorry, wrong, wrong color. Um, what, what that means is that you start to be able to see that uh, the film is just getting cloudy rather than this nice clear film that doesn't uh, show the fact that this is actually not individual decals. It's a uh, pair or a trio or however many, or the words aren't individually stenciled or painted or, or whatever. Um, and that's not what we want. So, it's another thing that the setting solution helps. It really sucks the, um, the decal down onto the surface, um, helping to eliminate some of those air bubbles. Especially true uh, on decals that are near edges. So the, you might have a decal that is on the very edge of some surface. Um, and you need to have the film kind of wrap around the edge. Uh, so using a setting solution to soften the decal and really make it uh, adhere to the surface is critical. Uh, you can also do things like uh, trim them. Carefully. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's uh, often easier to use the solution to uh, have the decal really fit in its space. This particular one is being stubborn. Not quite going where I want it to. This one's probably going to require quite a bit of setting solution because the decal film is almost as big as the part that uh, we're putting it on. So we're going to be in one of those cases where we do need that. Uh, Solution to help wrap it around a little bit. So we're going to set that aside for just a moment. Actually, we're not. We're not. Uh, we're moving on to the um, the side arm. Is is what we want to uh, to do now. So we have those two dials to deal with there. So we will grab the decal sheet. Move the last two decals. Not the last two for the interior, at least. Prepared servers. So these. These want to go in these little inventions here that may be difficult to see. Focus may be a little off. I think it tries to keep focusing on my hand rather than what I'm doing. So we want to put them here. Probably need to take the autofocus off when I'm doing this. Focus manually. Maybe too smart for its own good here. So it's details from decals like this that really kind of make the interior uh, come alive. It's a little weird on um, Modern aircraft, especially if you're trying to make them look like they are just parked, not about to deploy. 
um, because you'll have screens with all this information on them that may not make sense for a parked aircraft. But we don't have to worry about that with aircraft in this era because they didn't have screens. Like we would think of one. All dials and switches and knobs. There we go. So that guy is just about in place. I just moved it. Trying to use the um, tweezers to find the edge of the ring under the decal so I can be reasonably confident that at least the ring isn't going to show up right through the middle of the dial. I don't expect everything to fit perfectly, um, or at least want them mostly in the right place. Going back to the first decal, adding some more setting solution, really making sure it's nice and sucked down where it needs to be. So I was a little off on the decals on the right as well, but not uh, not so much so that I'm going to pick at it to try to get it in the right place because that is most likely just going to lead to a tear. So it'll shift it a little bit. I don't want to press my luck there. So I'll leave that alone. Same with these two up higher. I think they are mostly where I want them good enough at least. Um, we'll come back with several passes of a setting solution to really make sure that film around the outsides um, lays down like we want it to. Hey Leo, perfect fit of riot. Um, now maybe if I was getting paid to do this, I would uh, fight hard enough for that, but. Uh, I'm not, so well, more is the pity. So um, I'll, I will be putting more solution on there, but I'm going to cap it off right now so I don't have to breathe the fumes because they're probably uh, cancer inducing as everything is. Uh, I'm going to put the unused sheet that we're not going to be using today um, back in the, in the bag just to protect it from moisture and fingerprints and all that kind of stuff and put it off to the side. Um, and so we'll let the um, we'll let the decals sit a little bit in their solution. We'll come back and add a little bit more a couple times. But not uh, I gotta sit here and wait for it. So um, that more or less completes the interior, we still need to paint things like the uh, the seat, the cushion that the pilot would sit on, um, which again is an airbrush thing, and as I, I mentioned, I think before either of you guys were on, um, I'm probably not going to do a whole lot of airbrushing on the stream today because I've got a lot of mix this color with that color and spray it for this one part, and mix this color with that color and spray it for a different part. And so there's a lot of a lot of that that I don't. Uh, really want to micromanage a camera and the like with. So probably won't do much of that on stream, but there are some things that we can do. Um, for instance, uh, we can assemble portions of the um, engine cylinders. So we've got um, these banks of, of engine cylinders. So 
We'll move from the tree. Now, most of these will be, most of it will be black in color. Um, with some flat aluminum parts. And you, I could either spray, so something like this would be difficult to mask. So let me, let me show you what we're looking at here. Um, this is what we're doing. And the darker parts are supposed to be black. The lighter parts are supposed to be this flat aluminum. Um, so it would be very difficult to paint one color, mask the part that was painted, and then paint the other color. Uh, tape would be impossible. I do have some putty that I could use, but it's 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 it would be quite painful to do that. So um, what I think I'll do instead is paint the black with um, just this just a rattle can of black that goes on very nicely. Let that dry really well, and then come back and hand brush the, the flat aluminum because the flat aluminum hand brushes really well. Um, so I don't have to worry about uh, trying to mask off this highly complex shape. Um, which is, is not just not just not really necessary in, in this in this scenario. Um, also because it's not going to be extraordinarily visible. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that here in a minute. Um, it's just really not worth that level of, of effort. There are some people who are good enough with their uh, with their airbrush that they can um, they might be able to just do a minor amount of masking and then and then spray what they need to. Uh, but I am not such a person. Um, so, so this, well, I will probably continue to do this build on stream. Um, some of it I will do off stream and then just show at the beginning of the next stream what I did. So again, like that airbrushing is not going to be very easy to do today. Uh, with all the color changes and stuff that I would need. Um, so since, um, so what do we have here? Two, four, six, seven, 14 cylinder engine. Um, and since they're the same, they're, they will be the same color, uh, we can just um, glue them together and then paint them all as one. Again, as I mentioned uh, yesterday, I like to use paint to also help with the uh, strength of the bond. So you'll, you'll have the glue, of course, but then you also have the, uh, the paint acting as a second, almost a second adhesive. Um, I'll forget, I need to turn off that hot plate. <laughs> I've definitely left hot plates on long enough that they um, evaporated all the water that were in them, and that's not a uh, Good thing because then you just have a piece of glass sitting on a hot plate and those are known to blow, explode and catch fire. So bad all around. So when I say that this won't be very visible, what do I mean? Well, other than obviously it won't be very visible. Um, the only way you'll see it is is through the the engine nacelle or cowling, as I should probably say. Um, and this won't fit quite right. Let's see. Where's the back plate? Not sure if I'm going to do this. Uh, I need to think about that. So I can do this with the. Uh, 
engine cowling and an open or cowl flaps open or closed. I'm probably going to do it closed since I'm not going to do a whole lot of detail. Um, that's probably what I'm going to do. Um, anyway, that'll sit like that. And then the cowl will go over it. And then there will be a propeller in front of that. So you're really not going to see a whole lot. So um, there's not a whole lot of point in super detailing the, the engine, especially in this scale. Again, if it were a larger scale, like I see doing things like ignition harnesses and, and all that kind of stuff. But for something of this size, I just don't feel that that's necessary. And we'll do the same thing uh, as you know, spray black and then uh, hand paint silver for the uh, very simplistic ignition harness that we get uh, with the kit. Um, so for that, we'll probably just leave it on its tree. To throw things, especially fragile parts. Um, We'll just leave it on a tree so that we have something that we can kind of hold on to um, and still identify the part number also um, until we're ready to glue it down onto the, the engine. Uh, we need the other half of it, which is over here. We'll cut it off as well. Add the. This is like an airflow intake or air scoop or some such part to the nacelle. Cowling. I don't know why I keep calling it a, a nacelle, it's just a cowling. As I say, I think I'm going to do the cowl flaps closed because. I'm not going to have anything behind them. And so I don't know that it would look very interesting to have them open. And I don't think that they would necessarily be open just sitting there on, on a tarmac anyway. So it doesn't seem to make sense to me to do it that way. I may be completely wrong about that. That's okay. So just kind of test fitting without glue. Fits in there nicely. Take my glue. Hold it in place in the right spot. There is no uh, retention pins or anything there. It's just kind of held in place. And that's some glue. Yesterday, we're kind of relying on that capillary action to draw the glue into the space between the parts. And quick as that, with the quick setting solution, it's um, already nice and in, in place. Uh, that's a good question, Leo. Um, I can neither confirm nor deny the likelihood that I will fly these around my house with uh, plane noises. You'll have to uh, reach out to my wife about that. I 
All that being said, I certainly did so as a child. But will not uh, be providing that information about my adult choices. Only planes. <laughs> Where there's a uh, idea, there's an interest, I'm sure. So there we have that uh, air scoop at the top of the uh, engine cowl. Just added. One thing we won't do is we won't we won't leave it on this to paint it um, because then we would have these spots on the underside that are no longer that are not painted correctly. So in a minute I'll, I'll trim those off, and probably what we'll do is just use a um, stir stick taped to the underside of, of this surface so that I can uh, hold it without touching it and get everything that's going to be actually visible uh, when it's sitting in my case uh, painted. And it is it is uh, just this this nice black. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the, so a lot of the things I'll do like when I actually join the fuselage halves together. Which I may do today. I don't, I don't know. Um, I'll glue them together, and and we may end up with uh, a seam that we don't want, uh, which will require some sanding. Uh, and if that happens, then um, what I usually, or in, in case that happens, what I usually do is I will paint the uh, plane in in primer first. Just like a white primer, uh, and the purpose there does a couple of things. That there's a small seam, it might actually fill it, which is nice. But if it's not something that a the primer will fill, then the paint won't fill it. The final paint color won't fill it either. Um, so it gives me a visual on whether there's a seam that I need to take care of before I start doing the fine painting later. Um, however, uh, that being said. Um, this cowl is a single piece, so there will be no, um, there will be no, uh, theme to worry about. So I just need to be careful about getting this, um, attachment point off, clean it nicely with the X-Acto knife, um, so that there's not, uh, this very rough surface, um, and, uh, be done with it. It may be that one of those spots does actually cover a cover up a, a, a seam that's on the real aircraft, but at the end of the day, this is going to be on the underside uh, of, of it, and frankly, I just don't care. <laughs> uh, I'm not very uh, pro modeler of me, I guess, but. Uh, there you have it. So what we'll do, we'll just take one of the paint stir sticks and uh, a bit of tape. And use that inside the cowl. And a little less tape than that actually. That gives us something to hold the piece with. Um, actually, I don't even need the tape, which would be better. Afraid to put no, that won't work. So we will need the tape. Yeah, there's 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 accuracy and there's you know, keeping your sanity. Um, I would like to keep what little sanity I've got these days. Um, so it may be that I have to come in and, and hand brush a little bit just so that everything is black in there um, where the tape is. But it would be at the back surface. Uh, you won't really see 
um, we don't really see that, so the difference will be uh, negligible as far as uh, the viewer is concerned. We'll do the same thing with the engine uh, cylinders here. Just kind of put it on, on the stir stick uh, held there with friction. Eventually there will be a, a part there that you won't see, so you won't see that anyway. And this gives me something that I can very easily manipulate uh, to get at all the different angles I need to get at to uh, paint it with what amounts to a spray can. A little easier to control the paint via airbrush than it is via just a, a spray can like this, but um, much easier to uh, set it up this way and not worry about having to clean it later. Um, there are some things that, that, that I will do differently. I'll probably spray um, this little black component on the surface airbrushed rather than rattle can, even though um, I should be able to mask that off pretty well. Uh, I'm just not sure what I want to do about that yet, but rattle cans are nice. You just shake them for a few minutes <laughs> and uh, you're off to the races for the, um, for the spraying of that. Uh, so the exhaust is another thing that I'll have to, I'll have to do later. Um, it's a mixture of colors of uh, um, metallic gray and actually a red, mostly metallic gray with just a, a tint of red to it. Um, so that and the cooling flaps, which were here, are the same color. So I'll do things like paint those um, at this point together. But they're the only things that are that color, I think. I'll, I'll go through and make sure. But then other things like the insides of the um, landing gear uh, covers, the insides of the landing gear, the insides of the, um, the flaps, the dive flaps, are all the same mix of colors that need to be done. I'll do all those at the same time. Um, but again, likely, uh, likely off stream. I don't, I don't know that I'm going to be running for four hours, four, four and a half hours, whatever it was yesterday, today, um, on this, on this build. Uh, I did decide that I was going to build one of the land-based schemes. So I have, I have three options in the decals, uh, all quite similar, uh, but I think this, this is the scheme that we're going to uh, try to position this camera and it's not, ah, there we go. <laughs> which way is up, which way is down? Um, this is the scheme that will likely be painted. I chose it because uh, it, it actually has some differences in the build. Um, some parts that are unique to its particular um, this particular aircraft, um, and it will leave me the exterior markings um, for the other two that I can use on a different kit. Which was actually part of the reason why I even bought this particular kit, so that I could use the decals in two different builds. But here we are. So we're going to actually, uh, speaking of decals, go back and, and add a little bit more setting solution to the decals. Um, it's going to be difficult to see, but you can hopefully see that those decals are now nicely sitting down in their little roundels. Um, how close can I get before it gets fuzzy? Pretty close. Now it's focusing on the wrong thing. Uh, but they actually look like they are, at least to my eye, um, what they are supposed to be representing. So that is good. But again, we want to make sure that uh, all those films and everything are nice and soft and flat against their surfaces so we don't have any, any air bubbles under under them that will later become silvered and cloudy and really piss me off. So we are avoiding being pissed off. 
is the general idea. Which is probably a good general idea even outside of modeling, just avoid being pissed off. Not always practical, I suppose. But it is what it is. So. You're absolutely right, Leo. It is supposed to be a hobby. Which is why I stopped uh, competing in model shows because I was, I was starting to get to the point that I was building for the show, not for me. Um, I didn't want to do that anymore. So. I don't. Uh, trying to decide, so this is the Oops. Again, I'm probably going to do the closed, closed, uh, but paint is cheap, and I can very easily just clip this off and paint them both, and then see what it looks like. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, model shows are fun. I like going. Um, when I was competing at them, though, you, know, you had you're traveling sometimes three to five hours with your model, so you have to have it packed securely so it's not rattling around and getting, getting damaged in transit, and it's, it's sitting out on a table, and people have are there with their kids, and, and nobody's supposed to touch it, but sometimes stuff happens. Um, Actually, my dad had one of his models broken uh, by a judge, no less, by uh, who, was, who was judging the competition. Um, and then you also have to stay there longer um, because you have a certain number of, of hours to get there to the show and get your model registered and on the table. And then judging is from like noon to 1.30 or 2, depending on the size of the show. And then the awards are after that, and they go through all the various categories. And so it, it, it turns into um, a, a morning event, turns into an all-day event. Um, and you got to travel home. you got to pack everything back up and, and travel home. So it's just, it's not, it's not as, as fun as it used to be um, for me. Um, it's... Um, you know, there, there are de details that may not be important to me that are to the judge. So maybe they are an expert in zeros. And even though I followed the instructions, it turns out that the particular shade of red that I used on, on, on the, the knobs in, in, the, in the cockpit are too, is too bright. Um, so obviously I can't win. Um, I'm being somewhat uh, exaggerated, but uh, not exactly. Um, for most model shows, Leo, no. A trophy. <laughs> uh, for things like nationals, yes, you, you were competing for uh, money. I, I never did compete at the national level. Uh, my brother did once as a, and, young, and, and won. Um, with one of his figures in the uh, teen category some years ago. He's fantastic at building uh, building figures. Uh, but once you get it, but not, not, not to take anything away from him, that was in the young adult or the, or the youth category competing against adults who have been doing it as an adult for longer than you've been alive <laughs> um, may or may not be a reasonable thing to try. So, um, I think what I'm going to do is um, 
what I've, what I've been kind of fumbling around here and, and, and stalling for, but looking for anything else that was just this black. Um, and I, uh, let me do the landing struts. That's what we should also do. Because they are primarily black. So we'll get those off the tree as well. I think uh, the other thing I need to do is mask the canopy because the first coat you put down is black because the inside you want it to be black. Uh, then you put the exterior color on next, but I don't don't want to do that today, so I'm not going to do that today. Um, Looks like, other than the base coat on the canopy, then the only other piece I need pieces I need are the main landing gear struts. Do we care to know which is which, or will it be obvious? I think we can tell. So we can then just remove them from the trees and hold them with some tweezers so that we don't have to come back and do some touch-up on the landing gear. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up the points at which I just trimmed these off the tree, so that's nice clean plastic. And then I'm probably going to put my b right back up, because I'm fairly certain you don't want your eardrums blasted out as I shake my rattle can. Sounds like a knockoff Shakira song or something. Um, and then and paint these um, just out in, out in the front yard. I can't use uh, butt butt can shaking action. <laughs> Um, that, that will be on my only planes, is can shaking action. Um, and then I'll bring it back in so you can see what that looks like. I, I don't, I don't use the, um, the rattle cans inside for a couple of reasons. Um, one, they put out a lot more paint than my airbrush, much faster. Uh, and my airbrush hood that I use to contain most of the fumes and spray and, and, and uh, stray paint particles uh, isn't equipped to handle that level of paint flow. Um, plus, it just stinks. <laughs> um, so I step outside to use. These, um, these rattle cans. Better for my health, better for Mindy's health. And better for the longevity of my airbrush dent. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to mute and put the B right back up. Um, this will probably take uh, five, five, ten ish minutes, and then we'll be back. So grab a snack or whatever <laughs> if you're going to stick around.
All right. That went pretty well. I'm going to let it dry for just a second, and then I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. It came out pretty well. I may need to do some very light sanding to uh, get rid of a few imperfections. One of, the <coughs> Excuse me. One of the problems with doing it outside is you're doing it outside with all the wind and dust and whatnot that that entails. So... Yesterday, when I when I sprayed a few pieces black, um, there was no wind, and that was perfect. Today, there was a little bit of wind, so I think there's a little bit of dust in one of the pieces that I just did, but that's okay. We will um, handle that at another time. Um, so, I think one of the parts... There are a couple of parts that um, are kind of being used in a structural role, even though they're not really that in the real thing. Um, one of which here is going to be completely invisible, so I'm not even going to bother painting it. This one here uh, will be visible, so I will go ahead and paint it. Um, and this particular paint color typically does pretty well hand brushed. So, let me get that color out. It's this nice gunmetal color um, being used on. So, it's being used here on this piece that. Uh, will ultimately kind of represent um, the engine over-engine mounted guns. Um, I need to decide if I'm going to drill them out or not, um, but I would probably do so after painting them anyway. Um, so the armament of this guy um, has a pair of um, machine guns in the. I think it's machine machine guns in the wings and no, machine guns in the nose. Two 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 machine guns in the nose, and two 20 millimeter cannons on the wings. Is that the way it works? It's either that way or the other. I can't remember for sure. Um, so this part. Here, that's partially structural, is also um, representing those those nose-mounted guns. Um, I pause there because I realize this is going to be a bit of a challenge because um, they will stick out. So let me get that part. Further than I remembered, um, 35, 35. Um, so what we're looking at is, is this part here, and it will sit on, in this piece that is the Up, just right, right in front of the um, cockpit. So it sits. I don't know how well this will work for it, just with friction. It'll sit like that. And you can see the um, little gaps on either side. That's where these will stick through, like that. Probably difficult to see. Uh, difficult to see on screen, but um, problem is when I go to paint the body, they will be sticking out. But I don't want to leave this piece off and and then glue it on later. I want to attach it first, um, but then I can't put this in later. So I think what I'll do is I'll paint it. I might try to to mask it with some putty. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Um, 
but uh, I may have to come back and hand brush after painting the body, the fuselage, uh, the right color later on. We will cross that bridge when it is burning. I like this paint, it's, uh, this paint color. It's a uh, dark, shimmery metallic. It has a nice uh, kind of silver tone to it. Just fly over the bridge. <laughs> Touche. Touche. Well, this is a, a good paint color that just goes on nice and quick. Um, doesn't take a lot of uh, micromanaging. It just goes on. So that's that. Uh, can't see it. Here, please. Thank you. That's that. So. We'll let that dry. Um, the sheen will come out a little bit better in a few places as it dries. Um, another way I like to do this rather than using gunmetal on um, things like some of my tanks is actually I just paint it black and then use uh, charcoal or graphite to uh, give the same kind of, kind of effect. But uh, that will need to dry for a bit before we can handle it. The, the nice thing about airbrushing is it, it uh, puts the paint down very thinly. Um, and it dries really fast. Almost so, almost so fast that after just a few minutes you can handle it. Um, you don't want to like squeeze it because you'll get nice, nice realistic fingerprints in your paint. Um, but you can handle it without, without much risk. If I, if I went over there and tried to grab that, all the paint would just come off on my fingers. <laughs> So, um, just hand brushing components like that is nice and quick, but um, it does take a longer time for it to dry. Let's take a look at those decals again. I am liking the way they are looking. I'm going to do one more coat of this setting solution. And then I'll come back and make sure I've got no remaining air bubbles around them. Right, so I'll let that sit for a little longer. And I know I said that I wasn't going to paint that structural piece that you're not going to be able to see, but it turns out you might actually be able to see it a little bit um, through where the, the two nose-mounted gums are hanging about. So I think I will go ahead and paint it. Um, now this is a color that... Oh, what part number is that? Oh, wrong tree. That's why I can't find it. Uh, this is a color that... Um, this is the interior color, um, kind of cockpit green. Hey, Clary. Um, that I sprayed yesterday. Um, and had I noticed, had I looked far enough ahead and saw that this was the same color, I would have um, sprayed it as well. Um, however, I did not. So. We will hand paint. And again, we're really only doing it to get the, um, the impression of the color through what is going to end up being a very small gap anyway. Um, so not overly concerned about 
big paint color differences or, or, or anything like that. Um, mostly just concerned with getting it painted. Um, so let's see. Trying to see what will be most likely to not actually be seen uh, so that I can hold it. I think, I think I can just do it like that. So we'll use the same the same brush. Focus here. I really need to work on figuring out how to get this to focus where I want it to a little bit better. Now this color doesn't go on quite as nicely as the uh, as the gunmetal we just did. But it's not bad. There are some colors that, 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 even from the same company, you just learn that they are not meant for hand brushing. Um, they won't go on very smooth, uh, or if they do, it takes a ton of paint to make it look smooth. Or you have to do a whole host of, of coats of it to make it look right. Um, and you just gotta learn. Sometimes you can do this, and sometimes you can't. I, a piece this large, if it were going to be more visible, I probably wouldn't be hand painting it. I would break the airbrush out again. Um, given that it's not really going to be very visible, this is again just to get the hint of color, if you will. Um, I'm okay with it not being a uh, perfect coat, because you're not going to be able to see brush strokes or anything, it's going to be too restricted of you. So That may take one more coat um, to get it to look right. We'll let it sit for a while and come back to it and see later. Get the paint off the brush. All right, um, so there are some things that I just can't do until I uh, do some more airbrushing. And again, I uh, don't know how much of that airbrushing I'm going to be doing on, on camera um, because it requires a lot of mixing and movement back and forth. Um, so if you want to see what airbrushing looks like, I suggest going and looking back at the, uh, the video from yesterday where I kind of walked through it. Um, I'm afraid though at this point, there's not a whole lot left that I can do until I do that airbrushing. Um, that reminds me, um, I need to, what is it telling me to remove there? Why would I remove that? What is that? Uh, you probably can't see it on screen. There's these spots that it's telling me to remove if, I, if I'm building the particular marking that I'm, um, marking version that I'm building. But why? Seems questionable. Oh, it's 
interesting. So apparently I only have that radial aerial if it's the canopy base version. Well, I will um, I'll figure out what's going on there off stream probably. But I'll have to figure out what to do with that before uh, joining the fuselage house together. So, um, oh, but I did promise one thing. I would show what the flat black looked like, or the, the semi-gloss black rattle can look like. So this is it after just a few minutes of drying. Um, comes out really nicely. Focus. Focus. There you go. So it's a very nice semi gloss coat from that rattle can um, without much effort. So there are a few places I think I'll need to clean up, like I said earlier, but mostly came out really nice. Um, So, pretty happy with that. So, um, I think we will drop the stream here. I don't know if I'm going to do the airbrushing today or not, um, but I will do it uh, before um, my next stream for this. So, what I'll do is uh, things like um, the, I don't know what to call it, so I'm just going to say the front end of the, of the engine uh, has this, this paint mixed color that I need to mix and spray, because um, I don't, I don't tend to paint, uh, hand paint mixed colors. That's just usually asking for a problem. Um, so I'll do that. I'll also do, um, the, the wheel wells, um, and... I'm not sure what else. Uh, maybe, maybe the insides of the uh, of the landing gear covers and the insides of the flaps. Uh, oh, the other thing I definitely need to do is the uh, the exhaust. Right. So we had the exhaust that was was uh, was its own color mix that I need to make. Um, what I might actually end up doing is doing the exhaust. The cooling flaps, um, the seat cushion, because that was a mixed color, uh, the front end of the engine uh, off stream. Uh, but then what I may do, just as another another chance to see an airbrush in action, because I know that's just thrilling, is do the, the landing gear. Um, and the insides of the landing gear covers um, and insides of the flaps on stream uh, so that I can at least show that again. And that will get us through most of the mixed, if not all, of the mixed color airbrushing. And we can move mostly to assembly. So. Um, that's probably what we'll do. We'll, we'll either today or maybe tomorrow off stream. I'll do those few, um, those few airbrushings, and set them aside. Not do any assembly, um, and then uh, next time I stream, I'll show the results. I might start with the airbrush of the. Uh, Landing, bay, uh, landing gear, uh, wheel wells, and, and such, and then move to uh, quite a bit of assembly uh, before doing some masking and, and painting uh, from that point on. So, um, thanks guys for hanging out for a while and watching. Um, for those of you who are in my Final Fantasy group, I'll post in Discord when. Uh, the stream's going up again, maybe tomorrow, maybe uh, maybe next week, but uh, we'll see you next time that happens. So, thanks.